A while back, I received a couple of guillotine tools in the mail, and I always meant to do a little bit more thorough video about each of them and actually look at how they worked and what makes them unique or makes them special. And I've just been so busy, I haven't got that done. So today, we're going to take a look at a couple of guillotine tools that were sent to me who knows how long ago. Now, one of these came from Jerry, and Jerry sent a guillotine tool that is primarily designed to fuller down a blade. So if you want the typical fuller groove in the middle of a sword or on a bowie knife or something like that, this is the tool that he has designed for doing that. And we're going to take a closer look at that and what makes it special. It's a good heavy tool. And then Matt Jenkins from Cloverdale Forge sent me a guillotine tool that requires a little bit of assembly. And I was going to go ahead and weld this up as part of the video, but as I look at his instructions, I'm not sure this requires any welding. I think his intent is to be able to assemble this and be able to take it back apart and change the configuration because he's got all of these different slots in here that allow the die holders to be in different positions at different times. And by moving these, you can have wider tooling, or you can move them to these other holes and have narrower tooling, or probably split the difference, which I think is what I'm going to do, because that will then fit the guillotine tool dies that I already have an assortment of. And this way, I can use what I've got, but I can try his tool out without having to make new dies. And if I'm right that this doesn't have to be welded, if I ever need skinnier dies or fatter dies, I can always adapt. I think this will do is half inch, three quarter inch, or one inch dies in here. And you either have to set it up one time, make it fit the dies you want, and then weld it, or leave it unwelded and take it apart. We're just going to see how solid it is without welding it. But it's pretty good construction. Everything fits pretty well. So let's hope that that works. And I'm going to start by assembling this one. And Matt does provide a one-page instruction sheet that kind of shows how everything goes, but doesn't say what the best order is. So I'm not sure if I need to assemble the sides as a whole unit and then attach that to the base, which seems to make the most sense, or if I should attach the sides to the base and then try and wiggle everything else into place. But I think we're going to try and do it this way because it seems to make the most sense to me. You like jigsaw puzzles, don't you? But I think that's really all there is to that. Definitely think this is the way to go. And he provides a bolt to hold the whole thing together with here. And I'm not going to tighten that real tight at this point. I just want to make sure it's going to stay together and nothing slips out. And then this hole down here on the bottom it goes a bolt that goes in there and it's got a little index pin. That stiffens that up quite a bit. I think uh, the theory that this may not need permanent assembly may be correct. And it's got a pin and a pinhole here, but I'm not really sure that that's going to do me much good. I'll try to put it in. I think we have to drive it in from the bottom. I don't have room to swing a hammer from the top. Again, I'm not tightening anything until I'm sure I've got everything assembled right here. And 
The pin's going to be way too long. And it's going to be sort of in my way on the inside, so you need to tighten this bolt all the way first. But the pin will keep everything in alignment until I get that tight, so I'm not going to drive it all the way out. So this is quick and easy, and it wouldn't be all that hard to take it back apart if you need to. The other thing that pin will do is it will prevent this bolt head from turning, so therefore it won't come undone. So maybe that's the purpose of the pin. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. And the last thing, there is a little spring-loaded catch here that you can put in the back. And that means your dies can be locked in so they slide but they they don't fall so you can leave that sitting up while you go get your next heat and that's an interesting feature so I think that's it and it is good and solid my guess is there's no need to weld this and you can always take it apart and reconfigure it if you need to so before we try out the guillotine tool that Matt sent let's take a closer look at the one that Jerry sent and this thing is very adjustable. Both of these guys put a lot of thought into these tools. And sometimes why I like to buy other people's tools instead of making them, because I usually don't think of some of these things, and then I see them later and say, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. So now because of the slots that are in here, you can get very precise adjustment side to side to make sure not only does the die fit properly and come down straight on top of the bottom die, but also you can change widths. And he actually sent two widths of tooling. So again, here's one that we can change. And the bottom die is fixed. There aren't, there's not... There is not an adjustment on the bottom die, but the way he changes the width of the bottom die is he's just machined down so that it fits in that same slot. So that fits in there. And we can put the, the top die in and snug this stuff up. You can't have this super tight or you won't be able to slide the die up and down. Make sure it's standing upright. This doesn't take long, and if you're doing the same size fuller all the time, you're not going to have to adjust this very much. Now, the other thing that Jerry has done here is he has provided fences. So if you're trying to go straight down the center of a bar, you can figure out exactly where that is. You can set your fences. I don't know if you need to leave a gap because that's going to want to spread out as you forge it or not, but at least it's a good start. And fiddle with it and see what you need to do. So that's just a quick look at both of these guillotine tools and what some of the features are. And both of these have holes for mounting so you can bolt these down to a plate. You can have a special stand just for your guillotine tool. Some people that have their vise where they can access 360 degrees around it will bolt these to the back of their vise stand. Lots of options of where you can do it. You can bolt it to a plate that has a hardy shank on it, and you could certainly weld a hardy shank to the bottom of these. I'm going to avoid doing that for now, even though in the long run that's probably how I'd be more likely to use it, or even a shank that fits one of the holes in my swedge block, so I could use it over at the swedge block. But I think I will go get some material hot, and we will try these out. And because I can't mount these to the anvil, I think I will just come back over here to this bench and I will clamp these down directly over the leg of the bench with some C-clamps, and that will hold them well enough for me to try these out. My guess is this bench isn't solid enough to be real efficient, but we can at least get an idea how these tools work. So 
So we've got the fence set on this. Something shifted there, so I didn't have this tight enough. But you can see that that makes a nice fuller groove, so it's really a matter of just getting these adjustments. One of my bolts here swung out, it looks like. That would be entirely my fault and not the fault of the tool. Let's run that through again here. I may have got the fences too tight this time. Yep, this time I got at the fence is a little tight. So this definitely takes some fiddling to get it right, but I think once you get it right, it's gonna be a pretty useful tool for doing blade fullers. Hopefully you can see it's a nice even depth fuller there, symmetrical on both sides. Now this other one works very much like the guillotine tool I already have. Yep, wrong hammer. And wonderful for butchering in to create a shoulder. But because it's a C-frame tool, you can also come in from the end. Or should I say the side? Yeah, I guess it's the end. And as a result, you can get a similar fuller thing going with this, but you don't have the advantage of those side stops, and that's not something that would be easy to add to this. So it's just another option. So that's just the briefest look at both of these guillotine tools. They both seem to be very well made, very interesting designs, stuff I would never have thought of myself. And this one that does the central fuller, that's not something I really do much in my shop because I don't make a lot of knives. Maybe I'll try a few just to see how this works and just to get an idea how that works. But I do make some draw knives. And if I put a flat plate in the bottom of this, and I don't think it would be hard to adapt this to a flat plate of some sort, just build it the way he did the bottom die that fits it down in that groove. And then I'll have a place that I can just do a single-sided fuller because a lot of draw knives have a single-sided fuller on them. So that'll be good for that. And if I ever do, <clears throat> and if I ever get back into making blades, I'm sure I will use it for that. So that's a real handy guillotine tool. Thanks for sending it out, Jerry. There will be links down in the video description for both Jerry's tool and for Matt's tool. Is, and you can go down there and find the links. In fact, I'll put right up here in this corner of the video where I first opened these, and I think the links are in that video as well. Now Matt's tool is again an ingenious tool because it's adjustable for different width dies and as far as I can tell there is no reason to weld it at this point. I might change my mind later, I might decide that it's just a little loose. There is some freedom of movement as a result of it not being welded up, but I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem or not. I've never owned a C-frame guillotine tool, so this is going to be really nice to have one I can come in. Most of my dies are not designed to come in from the side, so I'm going to have to make some new dies just to be able to use this to its fullest advantage. But there's a lot of times I wished I had a bottom V-swedge and a top V-fuller to create a nice long V-forging on something, or maybe just doing the bits of tongs for V-bit tongs, and I think this will be just ideal for that. In fact, you could probably set up tools like that in this other one as well if you made different bottom tools for it. So this isn't limited to just fullering. This can be a pretty useful guillotine tool and if you make tools that stick up here you could come in from this side. Lots of options with both of these tools. It's really another one of these things where if you use your imagination you can probably find a lot of use for these that I'm not thinking of. So Matt, Jerry, thank you very much for sending the tools out. I greatly appreciate it. And that's just a short little video so you guys can see what this is. I think both of these I will probably make a plate for that drops into my swedge block and that way I don't have to worry about them on the anvil. And in some ways that's a little bit better. It's not as convenient for every heat. But 
just another option and I think I'll do that. Keep my current guillotine tool for use at the anvil and that just gives me more options in the shop. Of course now I have to find a place to store both of these. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Of course, share the videos with your friends. And as always, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. But I hope you stay safe and remember to wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.